if we do some of the things that you talked about, if we start to eat better foods, whole foods, um, manage our stress, um, get rid of the, the artificial stimulants like the caffeine that you talked about, can we kind of reverse the trend and get our adrenals healthier or is there sometimes a point where the damage has been done? It's been remarkable, the recovery that I've seen using just food, exercise, dietary changes and, 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 uh, and in most cases, however, I find that after someone's more than a mild adrenal fatigue, then they need dietary supplements too. Now there's one thing about the food I forgot to mention, is that when they eat, they should have a fat, a whole carbohydrate, like an unrefined grain of some sort, and, and an oil or, or a fat. So a protein, a, a, an unrefined carbohydrate, and a fat or oil at every meal. This helps keeps their energy much more uh, simple and, and much more steady. Mm. The other thing is we want them to chew their food 30 times a mouthful. And mm. the reason we want to do that is first of all, it's relaxing. Mm. And second of all, it helps digest their, their food because by this time, the stress has made it more difficult for their digestive system to work because the digestive enzymes have gotten burnt out from the stress. When, when someone's under stress, the blood flow tends to go out to the hands and the arms and the feet getting ready to do something. Mm -hmm. And so that means that there's slight starvation of the blood flow to the intestinal tract. And so over time, that stress makes it so there's less hydrochloric acid, there's less pancreatic enzymes, so people can't digest their food as well. Mm. So we want them to chew their food, not just because it's relaxing, but because it also makes it much easier to digest the food. So just a couple other points about food I wanted mm -hmm. to point out. But then they'll usually need dietary supplements. And this is a tricky one because there are many, many dietary supplements on the market, mm -hmm. and there's over 30 of them for adrenal fatigue. Mm. So how do you know? <laughs> That's the question. Now, it's a very interesting question because uh, they may not be the most expensive, they may not be the cheapest. Uh, you can't tell necessarily, but what you can usually tell is quality. So in, in most cases, uh, what I found is if someone is moderate or severe, they'll need uh, what I call a glandular extract, or what's called in the industry is a glandular extract or a glandular concentrate. And the mm -hmm. best ones I found have been the ones that are hormone-free, that are from the adrenal, pituitary, and the hypothalamus, and the gonadal tissue. That four is the best combination I found clinically in practice. And so uh, that helps provide the raw material those glands need to help reconstruct any damage that might have been done. Mm -hmm. But it's a slow working process to use those glandular extracts. And so the other thing you need is that in order to make those hormones proper, properly, you have to use uh, the nutrients that are needed along that cascade. Now, chief among them is a lot of niacin, vitamin B3, because these are all, I don't want to get too technical, but these are all NADPH pathways, which is a special kind of enzymatic pathway that uses up a lot of niacin. And so niacin, up to 125 milligrams a day is needed. B6 is needed and, and because there's several fluid shifts and other needs for, for the B6, uh, B6 in this pathways. Also, pantothenic acid, another B vitamin is needed. And then the, the B vitamin, up to 12, 1,500 milligrams of pantothenic acid, so much more than you can find. So you're going to find, if you look carefully, you're going to find supplements that will daily supply will include 125 milligrams of niacin. It'll include 50 to 100 milligrams of B6 include 12 to 1500 milligrams of panathenic acid. And then of course the supporting B vitamins on this and the supporting minerals that, th that they need to help this pathway function like it's supposed to. Magnesium is another really important uh, mineral that's needed and they need about two to 400 milligrams of magnesium. My suggestion is a magnesium citrate or a magnesium glycinate. Those are easily, more easily absorbed and, and uh, with 400 milligrams people don't usually have loose bowels like they might with some of the cheaper magnesiums. Mm. So those are some of the things that they can do. And then also there's some herbs I, I found that are very useful. I find when they use the combinations, and I like the tinctures more than I do the dry herbs, is an herb called uh, uh, ashwagandha. Mm -hmm. It's an East Indian herb that a lot of women use for menstrual irregularities. Well, it's really good to help the, regulate the HPA axis. Mm. So is another one that used to be called Siberian ginseng. Now it's called withanius and, uh that's also an important one. 
maca. It's a tuber that comes out of South America and uh, Peru mainly, and it's an important one. And then licorice, the old-fashioned licorice. Hmm. Um, is, and those four in combination work really well with the HPA axis to make people feel more settled, help them sleep better at night. They also seem to be good for PMS and perimenopausal symptoms, which you get with adrenal fatigue as well. So when we do that, those are three things they can do. A fourth one is look at the kind of C they need because vitamin C is critical for adrenal function. The adrenals use more vitamin C than any other gland in the body, any other tissue in the body. As a matter of fact, the adrenal gland is the only place that I know of a small amount of vitamin C can actually be stored. But in order to recover from adrenal fatigue, people need to have between two and four grams of vitamin C. The difficulty is the regular vitamin Cs are what we call ascorbic acid. Mm -hmm. And people with adrenal fatigue are already too acidic. Mm -hmm. So we need to alkalinize those or not increase that, as, as, uh, that acidity by having a pH balanced and then my suggestion is also get a sustained release vitamin C, so you get a sustained amount of vitamin C throughout three to four hours, so that it slowly increases tissue uh, perfusion. And if you do that, then the kidneys don't take it in and, and pee it out like they would normally. Mm -hmm. So those three suggestions for a special vitamin C, two to three grams a day, get a sustained release and a pH balance, and make sure the pH balancing is with minerals, not with the cheap uh, bicarbonates. So that gives you four suggestions. The, uh, and they can be all taken together, as a matter of fact, because you've got okay. one to rebuild the gland, one to help the cascade, one to keep the amount of vitamin C needed to heal that gland uh, sufficient, and one to balance the HPA axis. And then we can use that four-letter word, not used in medicine very often, heal. You will see mm. full recovery with the right lifestyle, with the right dietary changes, with the right supplements, in most cases, unless it's complicated by some other thing, you will see recovery, and you can sometimes see recovery to a better level than they were before they ever got the adrenal fatigue in the first place. How long? If it's mild, the, the questionnaire is self-grading, so you know whether you have mild, moderate, or okay. adrenal fatigue. Mild, six months, uh, mild, moderate, a year, sometimes a year and a half. Severe, you have to give it up to two years. Mm. People didn't get this shape in two minutes, mm -hmm. you know, it takes time. And they'll go off the wagon, and they'll get back on again. And they'll quit taking the supplements, and they'll start it again. Mm -hmm. And this stress will happen, and, you know, life goes on. Yeah. If we could put these people in a bubble, we'd probably get them well in two months, and they'd be great, ready to mm -hmm. go. But life happens while we're also treating it ourselves. And the nice thing is, Scott, all this is something someone can do themselves. Sure. They can order the tests online, the saliva tests. They, several companies send them to you in the mail. You can uh, go to a doctor, and, and I suggest you go to a doctor that's informed on adrenal fatigue for help. But most of this is, you're, it, it totally empowers the person to help with their own recovery. The combination of the book and the supplements and, and what they can learn on the Internet will help them be able to fully recover unless there's a complication. About 10 to 20 percent of the severe cases I find complications. And that complication could be a low thyroid. It can be a tooth that hasn't been taken care of. It can be um, an inflamed ovary. It can be a, a, a gut dysbiosis. In other words, their intestinal tract is messed up to the point where they can't absorb and utilize the uh, nutrients and, and the stress inside their intestinal tract mm. is too much for the adrenals to recover from. So they have to take care of that too. But in most people, if they simply do what's in the book, and they, they take the right supplements. Within three to four weeks, they usually start feeling some better. Key is don't quit taking the supplements. Don't quit doing the lifestyle things when you start feeling better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're not healed. You're just feeling better, okay? Mm -hmm. And so then you continue to go on, and over time, you'll notice you need less supplementation. You're feeling better. Your stamina increases. Your sleeping patterns improve. All these other things happen. So I also suggest that you keep a journal and just mm -hmm. four or five times a week write down three or four lines and say, this is, this is how I feel today, this is what happened today. And then on your, on your bad days, go back and look and you say, oh yeah, you know what, I'm able to do this now. Back then I always felt like that. Now mm -hmm. I just feel like this once in a while. And on your good days, you can look and say, 
I can't believe I ever felt that bad before. Mm. Because people have short memories, you know. Sure. They get sick a day and they forgot they were ever well. They get well a day, they forget they were ever sick. <laughs> so the journal is a good reminder about where they've come from and, and, and then eventually where they've gotten to. Mm.